Hello and welcome to K and K Play D and I'm the first K, the Keith, and this is Anna and Mokana number eighteen. And I'm the second K, Karin, and I'm just happy to be here. And today's episode is brought to you by Milosh's ex girlfriend. I'm morbidly curious. Let's get those dice rolling. Previously on K and K Play D and D, Karin seems to be fairly set on the idea of teaching me what a fish is. Well, maybe I wouldn't have to yell at you so much if you had any sort of concept, any sort of grasp of basic anatomy. It looks like a fish. It's in the water. It's a fish. It's most certainly a whale, which I think you'll find is not a fish. I also think you'll find we're getting our asses kicked. Now, that is a point that we can both agree on. Things took a turn for the worse. One of our own has fallen, and some of us are about to find that out. It is now Maximus's turn. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm so sorry. Shh. That's a three. We go to Milos. Mm-hmm. Milos is going to cast spiritual weapon. Okay. Now it's a bonus action okay. to do that. And so it's within thirty feet. He casts it on the other side of the skeleton whale in front of Seastone and Anna, and it's this big maul in the shape of a skull, but the eye holes are hearts. That's adorable. And so bonus action, do that, cast it, and then he is going to, uh, well, attack with it. That is a 12 plus 7. That will hit. Excellent. 1 plus 7. 8 points of damage. Okay. And you hear a couple cracks as this comes down on the back spine of the skeleton whale. Uh, it is now Tara's turn. Yep. How does the whale look? The one in the back? Yeah. Uh, it's starting to get cracked up. Tara, can you give me a flat 20? 11. You feel a pulsing on your back. It's, it's not much, you can easily ignore it, but you feel a pulsing, like something's trying to draw your attention on your back. Yeah, I'm well aware. Okay. Tara isn't, but I am, and it's <laughs> killing me. <sighs> okay. My Grandmaster Lord Tar. Just keep focused. Yes, my lord. I'm gonna step in front of True and smack at the thing with my bow. Roll to attack. Nope. That, that misses. I'm gonna swing again. Nope. That misses, but you're in front of True. Very nice of you. Anna, it's your turn. Uh, the creature out ahead, Moonbeam. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a con save. Well, what it means is that it breaks the concentration for sea stone, uh, so he will yeah. no longer receive. He'll no longer have. But I at least got him back up into the thirties. Um, uh, so yeah, it's a con save. Con save for the creature. Mm -hmm. Ten. What's oh, my spell save? Fourteen. Fails. 14. Yes. So it's. 2d10 radiant? 2d10 radiant, yes. Terrible. And it's only four damage. Well, it's now <clears throat> lit up and you see it. You all see that it is a skeleton in tattered robes. All right. Uh, how tall is it? It's humanoid skeleton. Okay. It is uh, now True's turn. I will step in front of Tara and attack. That was a 2 plus 8. I'm going to swing again. Natural 20. Yes. And I have a friend in yes, melee in range. Yes, in melee. I have my sword yep. and I am using Radiant Sunbolt. Yes, you are. Yes. 6, 11, 14, 17, 19, 20, Good. 20 
four points of damage. Beautiful. Gorgeous. I love it. To that whale in the back. Wham! And you see part of the mandible go flying off and splash into the water. And then she's going to spin around with that momentum and lash out with her tail because that's her signature move. That is a total of 13. And so she misses with her tail, but comes back around, ready. Well done. Yeah. Whale's turns. The whale in front is going to flipper slap Anna. Mm -hmm. That is a 15. That misses. And now it's going to bite at you. Okay. That's an 18. That hits. Five, ten, sixteen, seventeen, twenty-one. Anna's down. Anna's down. Okay. The one in back is going to flipper slap. Means that Moonbeam is also down. Moonbeam is down, you're right. Flipper slap tower. That is a thirteen. Misses. Going to bite at true. That is a nineteen. So that hits. Six, nine, twelve, sixteen, twenty points to true. Let's go to Seastone. All right. I feel, or I rather, I hear Anna fall behind me. Boom. The clanking of her armor as it hits the stone. How close is this thing compared to the other one? The first one that we fought and I saw it crumple. How close is this one to that? It's... It depends on how well you hit it. You might do it today. <sighs> right. Okay. I'm going to take a swing with my sword. Nope. I'm going to take another swing. Maybe. 19. That will hit. Can I stun and strike that? Go for it. Expending a key point. Yep. Just stun and strike. So, that'll be six points of damage. And now, natural four. You see your key wrap up through the bony joints and it just freezes. Excellent, I would like to use my, I would like to use my movement to dash forward. Okay. Towards the skeleton. All right, so you run forward, you're, uh, you're within about ten, eight feet of it. You said it was forty feet? Yeah. I'm a monk. Yeah, you get right up to it then. Right. That's my turn. Bonus action? I already expended a key point. Bonus action is free. Alright, well then I'll take a swipe at it. Oh, it'll be sixteen. That will hit. Alright. Life. Yep. So you come and you just deck it right across the face, like angry at what it's doing. <laughs> Dorn. Anna's down, and now I see that Maximus is also down, and I see that Seastone is looking pretty bloodied as he ran ahead. Behind me I can hear that Tarr is breathing really heavy. We're not in a good place. I could really use Sandra May right about now. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> what did I Hunter's Mark? You had Hunter's Mark the first one. Right, 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 right. I'll Hunter's Mark this front one and step over on his body okay. as I do so. Alright, alright. That's a natural 19. That's a 28. That will hit. So we've got Longbow and Hunter's Mark. All right, that's much better. What is it? He's the only one doing any damage is what it is. <laughs> it's so much different than earlier. Oh my gosh. Uh, right, I don't know, that's math. 17. To quote a famous DM, how do you want to do it? Uh, the back of the spine, like where, like where the spine meets the skull. And it drops. Your arrow pierces whatever 
magic was holding the skull there and it drops into a cloud of dust and it just I've burned through three of my four spell slots. I can feel that. I suppose I could cast it at second level. You could. Does that change anything? Uh, with Hunter's Mark, I think it gives you uh, extra time on it. Just it right. extends the duration. All right, well, I'm going to take my second shot at the skeleton way out front. Yep. I'm going to try to weave it around Sea Stone. Yeah. Yeah, that's a 24. That will hit. All right, that's, uh, that's 10 damage. Your arrow thunks into it. All right, that's a, I'll take that as a, as a victory. All right, Sea Stone, please do a wisdom save as it closes its bony fist in front of your face and its eyes glow this dull ochre. That's a 13. Well, you, Sea Stone, are now confused. Oh, I knew I'd run up her for something. And you I can't, can't what's quite... What's There's a skeleton. Where's his face gone? However, the effect right here, you can act and move normally on your own turn. All right, I'm just very confused. I don't... The skeleton is creepy, man. It is Milosh's turn. He's going to do a healing word on Anna and reach down and pray to Taff and Taff on her. And she gets nine hit points. <gasps> she is... Ah, you are back. You are still <laughs> here. Uh, I am glad. Why am I on the ground? The skeleton that is now dust bit you. Either get up or get out of the way. What just Dorn said. It is now Taro's turn. And True is in front of me again. True is in front of you again. You heard Anna collapse. You hear her gasping. You hear this quick exchange between people. You know, you have heard things happening behind you. I just need to kill this thing. I'm gonna take one more step back and take a shot. Go for it. Nope. Second shot. All right, that's a natural 17. That will hit. Colossus Slayer and Hunter's Mark. Okay. Yeah, that's 15 plus two. Yeah, 17 damage. All right, it doesn't look too good now. About time. Anna. Yeah. Welcome back. Thanks. I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. All right. Guess what? Mm. Your healing magics are doubled, remember? Because of one of your rings. Oh, cool. I'm not gonna object. That's 22 points back. And do you stand Excellent. up? Excellent. I'm finally up to where Sea Stone is. Do you stand up or do you just do that laying down? I do that laying down and then I will use half my movement to stand and the other half of my movement to start towards the skeleton. All right. It is back to True. She is gritting her teeth and is going to attack this skeleton in front of her and Tara. She is going to utterly miss with her sword and now she's going to try to headbutt it because she's frustrated and trying to do something. And that strangely worked for her. That's a 16 plus 8. Borrowing from Maximus. Oh, buddy. Borrowing from Maximus, and she doesn't know yet. 6 plus 4, 10 points of damage to it. Okay. It is still there, but it's it's reeling from that, that smack. That is True's turn. There is one way left. It's in the back. Mm-hmm. It's going to try to flipper smack true. That's a natural 18 plus 7. Mm-hmm. 10, 14 points of damage. Ah! She stumbles. Now it is going to bite. It's going to bite at true. Okay. 
It's a five plus seven, 13, 12. That <laughs> is going to miss. So True, stumbling from the flipper attack, she kind of bends over and it whoosh, right where she had been upright. And she kind of, oh gosh, just barely, barely survived being bit. Sea stone. All right, so I'm up front. I'm gonna take a couple swipes at this guy. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So one of those is a 19, the other's a 13. One will hit. All right, that one I would like to... Yeah, what the hell. Let's make this one a stun and strike as well. Okay. All right, that's 10 damage. 10, okay. <clears throat> so from your strike, you hit it, and you see again your key flow into it, wrapping around its joints, and it freezes. And it's glaring at you. Alright. I need you to make a wisdom save again. Yeah, that's an 11. You can act normal on your turn again. I'm still so confused about this guy. I don't know why he's able to do things when I've stunned him. So I would like to prepare for an agile parry with my longsword. Ah, uh, very nice. That's another key point I'm assuming, even though that it doesn't say that. Is not. It is not? Alright, so I would like to settle... Okay, so... With my sword. Add two to your AC for up until the next start of your next turn. Uh, it is Milos' turn. Mm -hmm. He's going as, uh, as an action to move spiritual weapon, but he's going to move spiritual weapon up to the skeleton and is going to take a swipe at it. Since it's stunned, he has advantage. Okay. Adds a 16. And that is a 10. So, this is a 16 will hit. Mm -hmm. That's a d8 of force damage. Seven, 14 points of force damage. Nice. Uh... Good job, Milos. I do good. He did very well. There's still a, the whale behind us, and then the skeleton ahead. Yep. All right, I'll move forward again so that I'm still blocking Anna's view. And I'm going to take a shot around Seastone again. Nope, not that time. I'm going to take a second shot. 17? 17 will hit. All right. And I have Hunter's Marked in, have I? Or have I not? You have not. All right, that's all right. Six points. Ten damage. Good, your arrow is thunking into it. Again. Oh, you have advantage. Roll again for your other attack. All right, because he's stunned. Yep. Does that count for ranged attacks? All right. Count for all attacks. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, no, I mean... There's a 7 plus. That, oh, that'd be a 16. That will hit. All right, actually. all right, all right. I missed, I missed red. Okay, yeah, so another 10. All right. Now it's Tara's turn because the skeleton can't do anything. I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gonna take a shot okay. at the whale. The whale? Okay. So pissed off at this whale. But I heard Anna's voice again, so that was a good sign. That's a 22 to hit. Double hit. Colossus Slayer, Hunter's Mark, and uh, damage. Okay. 19 points of damage. How does it happen? I don't know. I take the shot, see that it hits, and I turn around. Okay. And it, it crumples. And as you're turning around, you hear true sigh and relief. All right. I uh, take my movement to go stand by Dorn. And I'm going to take in my... In front of Anna. In front of Anna. And I'm going to take a shot around Sea Stone. I actually yell at him to duck! And then I'm going to take a shot again. Okay. That's a 21, but I have advantage, right? You have advantage. Yeah. <laughs> 21. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with the 21. Now, it's a caster. 
Yeah, so, so D8. D8. Oh, yep. and oh, I already Colossus slain. Yep. So it's a total of four damage. And your arrow thunks into its other side, opposite from where Dorn just hit it, going a little bit deeper into the robes and all. It is now Anna's turn. Everybody looks pretty terrible. I use the glaive as my, as a crutch, as a cane, as I drag myself towards the skeleton. Okay. I've got a movement of 30. You get nearly up there. I'm gonna misty step right up on the skeleton. You're, you're there, you're right on the edge of the walkway, right behind it, the mist swirling. It can't move. And Misty Step is my action. Uh, Misty Step is a bonus action. Misty Step was a bonus action, so I'm going to attack now. <laughs> okay, go for it. All right, that's a 19. Okay, 17 points of damage. Very nice. You just swipe right through its back, and it can't move. And you, you do hear. Uh, Several of the bones snap, and you see them break off into dust, but it's still standing there. You have one more attack. Okay, yes, I'll take it. Nope. You have advantage. Because it's stunned. Yeah. Nope. I mean, one of those was a 13, the other was an 11. Yep, nope, you miss. You swipe, you're still a bit... I'm hardly, like... Seastone and I are both at 31, which is half our hit points. Mm -hmm. True writes herself. Seeing everyone up around this skeleton. True sees Maximus's body. True screams in rage and runs forward. She can only get 45 feet, but she does her radiant sunbolt. That is a 13. It misses. Seeing that it misses, True throws a dart. That hits. Woman, what are you throwing those things? You nearly took my ear off. That is three plus four, seven, plus sneak attack, which is another one. So eight. I take its head off. Yeah. <laughs> and it <laughs> explodes into dust. And all of you just kind of slump shoulders bowed over this encounter here. Uh, Tara Im immediately casts good berries and gives five to True and takes five himself. Okay. Oh, you're looking right terrible there. Thank you. So do you. Let's see where we're all at now. Milos, how are you feeling? I am feeling damn. True, what's wrong? Maximus. <laughs> Seastone takes off running back towards Maximus. And the two monks are there with their fallen brother. Seastone checks for a pulse. Nothing. Nothing. So he picks Maximus up and just cradles him close to his chest and just sits there and rocks. True hugs Seastone during this as well. And while everyone is grieving, Milos is doing a spell. Mm -hmm. He's casting Prayer of Healing. Three. Everyone gets ten hit points back as he's praying to Taff and Taff to heal them and revitalize them. 
after a while, Seastone tucks Maximus into his robes. No, no, I will take him. All right. So Drew reverently takes his little body, holds it to her chest for a bit, and then slides him into her uh, pack. And Seastone cracks his neck, rolls his shoulders. All right, which of us is the worst off then? I've got two healing potions, let's use them wisely. Anna should have one. That is my call. I agree with you about that. I'm doing... I'm fine. You're not, but okay. Milo, she said you're all right. Oh, yes. See, Stone, you don't look so good yourself. Why don't you take the other one? I can cast Prayer of Healing again, if you would like that. I can do that at a higher level, if that would be beneficial to everyone, my Grandmaster Lord Tar. Don't use up your magic. We don't know what's around the next bent. As you wish. He's got a whole army of skeletons down here, remember? Oh, of course. Why don't we take a short rest? We should take a moment of silence anyway. I'm very nearly out of magic. Right, so am I. I think I am too. We could try to take a full rest, but I would not suggest we stay down here much longer. They do know we are here. The sandwich... We haven't done what we came down here to do. Yes, exactly. <sighs> if we are going to rest, I would suggest a short one. We don't have a choice. I will stand watch while the rest of you rest. So am I taking this healing potion or not? Hold on to it. We may need it in combat. In the meantime, may I pray for Maximus? Yeah. So Anna will get down and kneel and begin her prayer and we'll start a short rest. Okay. Roll what hit dice you need. I will roll some for true. I don't know what Tar's hit dice are. Tar's hit dice are tens. Really? Yep. And what level is he? Tar is a six. Dorn's back to full. Nobody else's. Uh, I'll roll one more for each Anna and Tar. Anna, as you're praying and resting, can you please give me a flat 20? 13. Okay. Towards the end of your prayer, you, you kind of leave some silence in there before closing it. You hear thunder somewhere. You hear rain, lots of rain coming down. We might be waiting in water soon. Maybe we should seek higher ground. Dorn, Tar, Seastone. Roll perception checks. I didn't know what you were going to say, so I was just preparing. That's a 15. That's a 22. And uh, that's a 9 for me. I am doing me lotion true as well. That's a 19. Yeah, I rolled a nut one. 13. <laughs> but one, I am not, not paying attention. Um, I'm on high alert, you know, it's not the first time that I've lost a brother, and every time it makes you feel something different, and this time it's just making me feel hyper vigilant. So the rest of you, when Anna says this, that you might be walking in water soon, you look around, you look around, 
the, the path continues on next to the, the, the waterway, but you guys don't hear any signs that the pathway ends or that there's going to be more water coming through. The sea stone. The sea stone, it sounds just as it's always been. Well, in that case, why don't we move more quickly? We've rested now, we should get up, keep moving. You know, at sewers, there are lines up, there are manhole covers, we can find our way out quickly if we need to. That's a good point. Mr. Kitty Cat does have many good points. Some of them are called claws. That's a very astute observation, Milosh. Thank you. Thank you, my Grand Lord Master Pumba Tarr. Pumba. 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 Thank you, my Grand Lord Master esteemed High Exalted One Pumba Tarr. Anapul's Tarr aside. Pumba. Uh, you can thank your cousin. She thought it would be cute. Right. And Dorn takes Sea Stone aside. Are you all right? No, I'm not all right. Of course I'm not. Is there anything that I can do? No. Not unless you're hiding a lot more magic inside you than I think you are. No, you're right. I don't have much that could help. I don't think. Aren't you scared? I hate the sewers, I hate the water, I hate all of this. I knew something bad was gonna happen. Why'd you come on this journey then, if you weren't prepared to do what we needed to do? Maximus knew what he was getting into, he could have stayed home. I, I he could have. That's what is true gonna do. She can hardly function without that thing. We'll just have to go out of our way to inflict ourselves upon her. What way? I suppose you're right. Are you okay? You got hit a bit too, didn't you? I was in the middle of it all, I'm alright. I'm much more worried about Anna than I'm about me. About you too, I was worried about you. You never give a second thought to jumping in, do you? No, not usually. Monk's job is to be decisive. Right. There are some things that you wait on, though. I suppose there are. I suppose there are. We should get going. The the creepy one is right. We should go. I am creepy? Oh. I did not know that. Me Milosh, uh one of your defining characteristics is cre creepiness. And do you like it? It has its uses. Oh, well then, I will not change. Yep. Just be yourself. So a lot of you gather your stuff, collect yourselves, and continue on heading east into the sewers. Anna, can you tell me what's going on for you? I'm concerned. I definitely smelled rain. I definitely heard thunder. And that makes me nervous being down here. I'm also reeling from the loss of Maximus. I'm 
It's not the first time that I've lost a comrade in combat, obviously, but it shakes me, so I'm very quiet and I'm processing. Uh, Anna, can you give me a flat 20 roll, please? 13. All right. You're leading the group through the dark along this narrow ledge by the sewer. Anna! This voice out of nowhere. Anna! I look around. Do I see anyone? You can do a perception check. Six. You see your troop. You see your company. Did somebody say something? I did not. But I can say something if you wish, Mistress Paladin. Mm, No, that's all right. I thought I heard somebody, that's all. Oh. I do not believe I have heard anyone. No. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Anna, wake up. We gotta get moving. But I am awake. What? Who said that? There is no one here but us and the undead dead. Lieutenant, none of us are hearing anything. Are you alright? So I don't, I don't know. Anna, we got to get higher ground. The storms are done, but the floods will happen any time now. I'm hearing somebody say something about flooding. We need to get to higher ground. It, but there is only us here. Are you going to argue with a paladin who's been having visions her whole life? Let's just find some ladders or something. Get to higher ground, then. That's no big deal, right? No, Mr. Kitty Cat Man. That is not a too terribly hard task to do. There are ladders all over the place down below here. May I roll a perception on Anna? Uh, you could do a perception or insight. Either way. Insight is more looking at people. Either way. I'm modified 20. What are you trying to ascertain with her? Uh, is she okay? Uh, does she look stunned? Does she look sick? Um, does she look like she's in a trance? Okay, fair enough. So you've been traveling with Anna for a few months now. You've gotten to know her pretty well in patchwork. She's Anna. Looking at her here, she seems concerned, she seems harried, but other than that, she seems in perfect health. Okay. Which way do you want to go? I guess... What's happening with the ground where we are right now? Are we headed down or are we headed up? On the walkway, it is flat. But there is a slight pitch for the waterway going down. So it's the opposite of the direction that we want to be going, in my mind. From that voice. I begin to look for uh, the next ladder. Okay. Still heading east. Yes. Roll me a perception check, then, Elena. Nine. You don't see any ladders ahead as you're leading the group. Pretty unadorned walls through here. Uh, You're still heading due east, going through on this five foot wide walkway. But eventually, probably after 20, 30 feet, uh, it cuts south and widens again to a full 10 feet and stops. But there are little rocky platforms leading across to a to an alcove across the waterway. Does it look like that direction will lead up at all? 
everyone can do a perception check to see. We'll have my rangers go first. We've got a 17 and a 13 okay. on the rangers. That'll be a modified 20 for me. All right. So the 17 and sea stone, you guys see in this alcove across the water from you, there is a door. It's a very small alcove, maybe five feet wide and three feet deep, but there is a house door set very well in the wall here going north. And the rubble, the rocky platforms lead to this alcove. But there are no walkways past where you are following the water to the east. Lieutenant, I think this might be a dead end. Either we cross here and try to look with that door or we turn back the way we came. Yeah, uh, the, the kobold said east. We, we are going east, but... But there's nowhere more east to go at the moment. There's that door, Seastone. Hey, you want me to do it? I mean, I, I can do it, or you? You're the one with the lockpicks, aren't you? No, you're not a church. Well, no, but you said my name, like, you know. But you, you saw the door, you, you noticed it. Right, well, that wasn't volunteering, was it? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't split the party. Either we all go or we all turn back. Th there's no, not enough room for all of us over there. I, I will, I will check the would you like me to check the door? Go ahead. Yeah. So True is going to... Parkour. Jump across the little rubble platforms to the alcove, and this is a dex check for her. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. Uh, that's <laughs> 13. <laughs> so True jumps onto the first platform. She jumps onto the second one. As she's leaping from the second to the third, her foot slips and there is a splash. And she's in the water. She's scrabbling onto the third. She's gonna have to do a strength check to see if she can climb back up. Okay, okay. That's a 16. All right. So she climbs back up, her red hair all matted around her, her clothes clinging to her body. Her tail is swishing and flicking water from her, and she looks like... 10 out of 10 points, my love. She gives you a lovely view of one of her fingers, gets back to her feet, and tries jumping the rest of the way. Okay. Okay. That is a natural 19. So she jumps to the fourth and then into the alcove where the door is. She gets there, she's looking at the door. It, the door isn't set perfectly into the frame. It's like it was an afterthought or they made the opening before they had the door and then just jammed the door in there. Yeah, but I grab my tools and I bend down to look at the lock there is no luck. I glance back at my companions and reach for the door handle and it twists and it opens. And I do a, a motion saying, enter. I will attempt to follow her. Athletics? Oh. Um, sure. Nine. Her splash. <laughs> it's the armor. It's always the armor. Strength, hey? Yeah, strength climb back up. Terrible. This is gonna be bad. Eight. Um, you, you no, you can't climb up just yet. You're being pushed into the uh, the pile. I'm gonna jump ahead and see if I can give her a hand. So I suppose that means that I need to do the dexterity check as well. Yes, please. Yeah, that's a 23. 
So you you jump very easily over Anna onto the pillar. It's when you're nice and lean, is. and you're not carrying extra superf- superfluous superfluous armor and things like that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna reach my hand down and try to pull her up. All right, strength check. Nope, that's a grand old six. Yet yeah, no, the the push of the water on her is is actually pulling you down. So you have to let go before you lose your footing. I um I get my foot in and I'm gonna try again. Okay. That's more like it. That's a fourteen. You are able to pull her up part way, Anna. You can do a quick strength check to see if you can help. Six. Nope. I'm trying, but my armor has gotten waterlogged. Yes. Yes, it has. But I'm a human. I grit my teeth. I'm going to keep pulling. Belosh, get over here. Oh, of course. I stop admiring the view, and I jump across to help my brother, Just Dorn. Jumping across, that is a natural seven. <laughs> Plus two. <laughs> Curse splash. This is not as refreshing as I would have hoped. I am going to try to do a strength check so I can climb up next to Anna. Oh, Lord. That is a 14. Okay. okay. I climb partway up, and I am going to attempt to push her up, but I will have to have disadvantage because I am holding myself up at the same time. That uh, is two fours. fours. I slip back into the water. Damn it! Sea stone! You think that I can help with this sort of situation? I'm gonna parkour my way over despite all that. Yeah, no, that's a lot. That's, you know, 23 or something. Mm-hmm, you I'll, get there easily. I shuffle my claws and I dig them in and get real nervous, but I notice that his arm is shaking, so I'm gonna try to get on up first. That's an 18. Sea stone. You jump over there, you dig your toe claws in, you see Dorn struggling to hold her, and Milos pushing Anna up, is, but is sliding down himself, and you just grab onto Anna's shoulders and just pull her up, and as you do, she, she comes up and you fall flat on your bum, and she is standing over you, sodden. It's the adrenaline. I scrabble on my belly and I'm gonna try to pull up Milos as well, now that I'm lying down, so I have a little bit more leverage. I'm gonna hold on to his ankles. I'm mighty grateful of you, Mr. Kitty Cat Man. All right, so that's a 10 for me, and that's a 19 for me. Seastone, you're able to reach down there, but you don't have enough oomph to pull up Milosh. I'm gonna, I'm just taking him by the ankles. But Dorn, somehow Dorn, blessed by Roe, is able to pull the two of you up by his onesies. <laughs> Lean little Dorn. Lean, Lean little, little Dorn. sailor Dorn. It's not the first time I pulled people out of the drink. Exactly. You know how to do this. It's just you haven't done it before holding on to a Tavoxy's ankles. No, and neither have I done it dragging people up who are wearing heavy armor. No, but bless Ro for blessing you. You guys are doing great. Now let's do some dex checks to get you guys all the way across before Tarher attempts anything. Well, this is going to be great. That's a mm, 11 for me. Splash. <laughs> right, that's a 17 for me. You get across just fine, but you do hear the splash of... And I say a little curse, and that'll be a 14 for me. All right, Anna... You get to the last one, you hear Sea Stone yelp and go down. Dorn jumps across and curses. <sighs> You're about to go, but you feel your feet slip, but you stop just in time. Let's see how well Nilosh does. You caught in my tail, you damn dirty cleric! It is a fine tail. Get off my tail, you made me go into the water. I hate the water, it's full of excrement down here. Just move. I'm gonna pull myself out. But your tail made me fall into the water as well. We are swimming together again. And, and there, there you have, have it. Another, another episode, episode of K and K Play D&D, D&D is in, in the books. books. That was That's on Anna Makana, episode number 18. number 18. And I'm the first K. And I'm the second K. What? <laughs> Got ya.
Uh, if you follow us over on Twitter, you know that I am starting to gear up for a 555 follower giveaway of some dice bags that I've been knitting. Keith is looking at me like this is news to him. That's fine. He can't win it anyway. You mean I can't put, make another Twitter account and join in? I mean, you could, but that would not be ethical. If you have other ethical things that you would like to pick our brains about, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Tumblr and... Pinterest, Pinterest and YouTube and Podbean and all sorts of places. Speaking of, over on Podbean, we're going to be posting another of our Veil of the Void episodes sometime later this week. And I know that some of you will enjoy it, so I hope that you take advantage of it. Music was written by both of us. Backing tracks were done by Tim over at Tabletop Audio. Thank you, Tim. Hit like, hit share. Please let your friends know about us. Please leave reviews and star ratings and all those things where you are able to. That helps us out a lot. And finally, I'm the first K. The key. And I have the second K, Karin, signing off. Thanks for listening. And be well.